Hello, how are you guys doing? So as I told you in one of my video, I was in my career, I was doing many interviews, maybe thousands of interviews on various positions. Some are senior positions, some are like entry level position like associate engineer or engineer, sometimes maybe even uh, join for intern level interviews. So most of these entry level jobs like internship, associate engineer, engineer they are missing best tool they can have to get this job. If they have this tool, and I have seen when when the candidate have this tool, they get job like instantly. I mean, no doubt they get the job. So they're missing this tool. So therefore, this video is dedicated to who passing out from universities and looking for entry level uh, and looking to enter into this IT industry how to pass this interview how to enter this interview and how to build your tool that is your final year project when you don't select right project as your final year project you're missing the golden opportunity to get a good job when you're in university i've been there probably you've been there maybe probably already getting into this situation when you're in university you just need to somehow get some project done and get the project accepted Right. So you write a proposal where you can do easily, you can do with your exam, you can like get get done within the maybe weeks or months. And then you're trying to get this project accepted by the board uh, panel. And then if they accept it, if you get this mark, whatever the mark you remain to uh, complete your degree, you it's enough for you. Right. So you say, OK, just just do the project. So most of us doing a project to sake of doing the project don't do it because this is the key yeah you and you learn like years and years in your university you face uh, many exams and you pass it was a hard time studying and everything but believe me this is the key to you to get a good job so therefore today video i'll tell you and i'll explain you how to choose a project where it can help you to get a job in the industry before we start, just look little down and see whether you're subscribed to this channel. If you're not subscribed, there's the right time for you to subscribe. And also, if you like this type of content, tell me that by clicking this thumbs up button and or writing a comment on this video. So then I know I did you like this content and I did something for you. When you're applying for a higher level position like a senior engineer, associate tech lead, tech lead or an architect, you have so many things to share with your new company or a new position you're applying. The experience you have gained, tools you have used, technologies you have expert, the projects you work. There are so many things they might be interesting about. But when you're applying for your first job, you don't have literally anything to show them other than your degree certificate or something like that. But here's the problem. For a year, thousands of students are graduating with the same degree you're doing. And you think you're being a backstop is interesting? No. What interesting is how you applied what you have learned in practically. So if we find a people like that, you get priority, obviously. That is why it is very important you choose the right project. So therefore, select a topic, select a project which is industry relevant. Don't find a topic like inventory system, library management system or something like that, which is decades year old concepts and right now like you can find tons of online free tools right? therefore find interesting problem in industry and try to solve that make it industry relevant that is the first thing you need to consider when you're selecting a topic and the second most important thing is find a project find a topic where you can demonstrate your skill your analytical skill your programming skill your problem solving skill your designing skill so show find a project where you can showcase your skill if you find a project like inventory management system, it's just a basic CRUD operations. This is nothing you to solve, right? There is nothing you to demonstrate. The CRUD operation, even now school kids can do it. So it is you are not special by doing a CRUD operation. So find something where you can apply event-driven design, microservice architecture, scalability, some like a message-driven data analytics, right? So so you can find you can think many things you have learned throughout these three or four years. So therefore. Second thing is find a project where you can demonstrate your skill. To do that, be aware about industry trends. If you don't know, if you are not updated, just have a chat with someone who's working in industry. These days, like cloud computing, ML, 
like AI, those things are like trending topics. Find something relevant to that or bring those topics into your project. But make sure this that topic giving some purpose. Just because of you bringing the topic doesn't help. Just because of you want to add something with the ML or uh, something like AI, don't just bring it, right? So make sure that feature adding some value to your project and now you have a feature which is industry trend and industry relevant so it is you can really market it another thing you can consider is bringing something which is a little bit research involved like you don't have to invent from the beginning find something which is already done and add some new extension for that for example you have enough location based services right now for example uh, food deliveries package deliveries so many things vehicle tracking so many things which is involving the location but if you can do something on top of that something like a prediction something like a, a traffic modeling something like that which is not there but is extension to the current system you have this would be really good but other than that you adding like a location tracking or a, a vehicle tracking or a driver tracking thing into your application it doesn't give any wow because i mean it's already out there also like you giving a notification from your system it's like a decades old like socket based notification post notification email notification those are very outdated but if you can build some feature into your system where it listen to all notification and kind of uh, aggregate it summarize and send into uh, the user so then there's adding a new feature right so those things even we need in the real industry rather than getting hundreds of email but if there is a middle layer if they can read it and like summarize it and send you can always use your generative AIs, some uh, some AI tools, APIs. You have enough things to use, but use those and add some extension to what, what already there. So then, industry is obviously interesting about your project. When I'm saying they're interesting about your project, it is not that they're going to buy your project. It is not that they're going to hire you to do that project or nothing. Not like that. The important thing is when we interview someone, if we can see, wow these guys are thinking like this way so then i can use them into my project because they have innovative ideas they're solving problems through what they have learned they're applying what they have learned into the real world so then they will be really good candidate to my team other than that i'm not interested to buy your project or run your project after saying all these things i need to warn you about this as well when your scope is too big to your project scope then you're not going to complete it then your project is probably a failure project same time if you get a smaller scope then your project doesn't have a value so you need to make sure you don't go into this pitfall where you don't have the right scope in case if you have a bigger scope make sure you draw a frame this is what you're going to implement and clearly show this is how you can extend it is not that you get a bigger scope and you implement one module and throw it out throw it there right so no if you're getting a bigger scope implement a portion and keep extension point and showcase this is how we plan to for the, our next milestone this is how we can extend that oh this somehow this is how someone else can extend your project this is the most important thing on this video when you get a group project we have a misunderstanding like everyone has to code no everyone not required to code in your team, you should have someone uh, to play the BA role, someone to play the PM role, someone to play the QA role, someone to play the dev role. Because when we pass out, everyone is not trying to become software engineers. There are people who are choosing QA as a career. There are people who are choosing BA as a career. There are people who are choosing PM as a career. So get those people into your team. You have to have a right composition of your team. That's the most important thing because Otherwise, you get a five people, most of the time you're friends and though everyone trying to code and then some people don't know how to code and they have a mindset, we have to write at least small code to contribute to this project. No, you're a BA of the project, you're a PM of the project, right? And then you play that role. You have a project plan and then trackings and then a BAs like write the right documentation, QAs, uh, create those requirement traceability matrices, test cases, test strategies, test plans, do your role on the project. It is not necessary everyone to code. Now, we select a project, now we select a team. Now, next thing is, what are the languages or tools you are using? When you get come into this, make sure you do little research, what are the tools what use in industry. If you are using some outdated tools, your whole effort going to waste. For example, 
still I'm seeing uh, final year projects come with the uh, like MSSQL or a MySQL database and then basic uh, service layer and basic front end. No, it doesn't have any value. So use this, do little research about the tools. We don't do this synchronous programming anymore. Most of the languages supporting functional programming and most of uh, system architectures are going with event driven designs. They use Kafka, they use a caching to uh, improve the performance and then Kafka to the messaging or event driven, then Dockers to deploy, Kubernetes, like you have various technologies, serverless programming to do little research and make sure you get fine latest updated tools to your project. That doesn't mean you need to use all the tools out there. That's a big mistake. If you get a like, because you are already new to this, uh, this paradigm, right? You, everything you have to learn. So if you have a hundred things to learn, then it's not going to work. So therefore, get few tools, which is the uh, industry is uh, like what what using in industry. Make sure those are industry standard, those are using in industry, and those are value in industry. So then the effort you're putting to learn is not going to waste. Not just the tools. When you're developing the project, make sure you using industry practices. For example, for code repositories, use Git, and also not just using the Git as just for using Git. Do little research how Indras are using Gits, how the Git uh, pipeline works, like release branches, feature branches, patch, patch branches, and the main, main branch, develop branch, how the releases goes, when, how, when to create the tag, when to create a branch, and then when to delete the branch, when to delete the tag. So many things what we use in industry. Have a chat with someone who in industry or do little research on if i mean youtube is a really nice ground even i have done so many videos uh, uh, regarding these practices so follow those why because when we have a chat with you in interview when i see you have follow all those methodologies like a jenkins pipeline or a git workflows or a git branching strategies or a feature toggle something like that then i would be like wow can you start from tomorrow because I don't have to train you. You already done that or you already done your homework. I just need to like kind of a little bit shape with you, right? So then you will be a real advantage for me. All right, now we have a topics team and the tools and the practice and everything. Now we, we are going to solve our problems. When we solve this problem also, make sure those are practical solutions. Like don't just build a hypothetical solution where you can see even the way to implement like. For example, certain of your uh, solution may be theoretically very correct, but practical implementation may be not practical in probably next five years even. For example, if you are, if you are looking for like quantum computers to solve this mathematical problem, like a crypto cracking or a like blockchain cracking or something like that, which is you cannot demonstrate practically or industry cannot apply practically, then your waste like your your effort might be waste but that being said if your expectation is to like a join to nasa or a, some agencies like that then yeah doing that great project is really worth because then they will see your potential and everything but make sure you that is your target because if you miss that then you will not landing anywhere where you can use your project to get uh, some other usual job, usual software engineering opportunities because whatever you implemented is maybe highly theoretical and very like very low percentage is the requirement uh, for the, some, some uh, topic like that. So then it will not be able to use in majority. So make sure if, you, if that is your project, make sure you are targeting that type of opportunity. After that, Make sure you build your portfolio and you have something, some impact you did to your project, some module you implemented and then how to have a slump A to Z visibility about what you have done. How, what is your portion? What is what you have done in the project and how that part integrated with the other modules and other parts of the project. And if you are doing a, like a BA work or a PM work, so make sure you have full enough use cases where what are the problems you face, what are the challenges you face, when did you miss the deadline, then what you have done when, uh, to catch up. And if you miss the deadline, uh, so what was the workaround, whether have you delivered like MVP product and then add the features later. And when someone is absent or someone is sick or something happened, you miss the deadline, other dependencies cost, then how you manage it. Have a right strong use cases where you can go and explain. It, like in summary, what you have to have is, though you haven't worked on an industry, though you haven't worked on a team, you have to showcase 
the real world experience so that is the key to get the real good opportunities in industry and now i get that so when you do this project with the academic staff or academic supervisors they may don't have this experience the real industry experience so you always can talk to like you can find someone from linkedin you can find someone on a facebook or any other uh, groups or any anywhere or you can talk to uh, some of your seniors and then see uh, like is there anyone who can help you on those companies and like that have a have a like kind of chat with them chat with someone in industry share their ideas and they will help obviously they are going to help you to make your project success because i mean i don't think they will ask money for that and like they will voluntarily help you to get their project success so you can kind of get an idea how they do in industry so you can apply to that to your project so don't complain like we didn't have opportunity our supervisor didn't tell us because as i always says the blaming someone or like passing the ball to someone and putting the blame on somewhere else doesn't solve your problem if you miss opportunity you missed it doesn't matter who's wrong so then i hope now you can do a real good project share this video who are in like even a first year second year or who are like willing to go to universities and share this video in a social media so a lot of people will see this video and they will do a right good project and they will use that project to get a good job in industry so then if you have any questions anything else you want to learn or you would know about this write the comment down below and or send me a message on facebook uh, so i'll try to reply you until i see you in the next video stay safe and take care